Hey everyone, Jimmy here. For those of you living under a rock, I'm envious. You see, I have to carry around this tent and deal with the weather, but sometimes I get a really nice sunset. But you, you knew about a hidden campsite that sits under a rocky ledge, which was passed down in your family for generations. So you didn't think to bring a tent because of the natural shelter. Can we talk about bear canisters for a second? Bear canisters are the worst. In some places, like Yosemite National Park, I'm required by law to carry a two and a half pound plastic can into the backcountry. How can I achieve a 10 pound base weight when I have to lug this heavy thing around? And the land management agency doesn't even care when I tell them how important it is to be ultralight. They say that I have to carry around this bear can in order to protect the bears and other hikers. Instead of a two and a half pound bear canister, Imagine that Yosemite required you to carry 50 pounds of bricks in your pack on every overnight hike. How do you think you'd feel about that? For me, I think that I wouldn't like it too much. And I mean, if other hikers were required to do this as well, and you know, the bricks are gonna go towards creating like a public shelter for people that got caught in a storm, then yeah, maybe I'd do it. Or maybe the weight of those bricks will ruin my fun and I will choose not to go to Yosemite. And having that choice, that's called privilege. How would you feel if only you and the people who looked like you were required to carry 50 pounds of bricks in their pack on every hike in Yosemite? Would you still do it if you knew that these bricks were going towards building an extravagant private home for the chief ranger? And what if they tell you that if you stop hiking or try to leave the park, they'll shoot you? Okay, let's try another thought exercise. Imagine you're an Asian male hiker, like me. And imagine that we occasionally indulge in a more ultralight form of food storage, an ERSAC, which is not an approved food storage method in Yosemite. How would you feel if you were fined the maximum amount of $5,000 for not using an approved bear can? Well, maybe you ask around with your Asian friends and we tell you that, yeah, we also got the same $5,000 fines. So maybe you think, hey, it serves us right, or maybe you think that the punishment is too harsh. Now, how would you feel if you found out that all your white friends who got caught with an ERSAC in Yosemite got off with just a warning? Maybe you and I were not so different. Like you, I'm also living under a rock. And maybe it's a different rock because this rock wasn't passed on through generations in my family, yet I came across it and now I get to benefit and live with this privilege. I get to choose to head into the mountains to escape my troubles or seek adventure. And I get to choose to go into Yosemite National Park. So here's the deal. There are fires in Yosemite that have been burning for a long time now, and more and more hikers are starting to notice. So if you're in Yosemite and, you know, you're sitting around but your tent is on fire, then maybe you would need to put out that fire first. But if you're sitting cozy in your camp chair and you smell this lingering smoke, then I would strongly urge you to put down your book and go grab a bucket or your titanium pot or your DIY water scoop and come help out with this burning fire. We can do it together. <laughs>